Have you been considering picking up an external USB DAC or an internal PCIe sound card, but not too sure which one you should get out of those two, if it's even really worth your money, if you notice a difference even in things like gaming? I think this video should be able to help you out. Creative Labs sent over their Sound Blaster X AE5 and their Sound Blaster X G5 for me to basically kind of give you answers to those questions. So let's get into it. Now I'm going to start off with a quick tour of both of these devices. First of all, the AE5 is an absolutely beautiful bit of kit. The white shroud on this Pure Edition is just glorious to look at. And it also does have an RGB element on the side, which is actually quite nice to look at. And the Pure Edition that I have, which is the, the white one you're seeing here, that, ha that one comes with four RGB LED strips, which when you plug them all into your case and set it up in the software, kind of gets a bit mad with how much light you can show, but um, either way, obviously, it still brings it into the very much kind of RGB centered 2018 that we're in now, so um, it does look very, very nice. In terms of connectivity, you have the RGB header on the side, as well as a Molex connector on the back and your front panel audio header. You also obviously have the PCIe connection itself, as well as on the back, you have a specific headphone amp uh, port which is really nice to see as well as SPDIF or optical as well as a number of other outputs including all the way up to I believe 7.1 uh, compatibility so that's awesome to see. Now the G5 is as I said an external USB amp and DAC combo and it's actually pretty cool. It has an illuminated red logo on the top as well as a physical dial that you can use to change the volume. It's a little bit loose but you can also push down to fully mute the volume which is also quite nice. Uh, on the back you have a line in and line out as well as a USB, a full size USB type A port uh, as well as on the other side where the dial is you have the headphone and the microphone jacks. You also have a couple of buttons on the side to allow you to change the gain and also put on the scout radar mode which is kind of interesting as well as change the effects which you can also change in the software. So now you have an idea of what these two devices are and kind of where they sit and what they do. Now let's take a look at what it's actually like to use them. Now obviously the USB amp and DAC is a lot more versatile in its kind of activities so you can not only have this connected to say your PS4 for example and have your PS4 directly connected in terms of the audio output to this and then to some headphones or to some speakers uh, but you can also have this connect to a laptop and you know keep it portable or to your desktop and just have a bit more control of where you plug in your headphones and also more control over or how you actually you know control and listen to stuff through your headphones so that's always interesting to see but the, the primary way I was testing it was just with the included micro USB cable with their software installed. The AE5 is a lot more for the dedicated sit at your computer and listen to music or watch movies or play games um, and this one while it does have the dedicated headphone amp which is awesome to see in a dedicated headphone port uh, you can use I believe it's 5.1 uh, audio or surround kind of description with 7.1 emulated so bear that one in mind but it does mean that you can not only have a great headphone experience but you can also have uh, at least 5.1 uh, audio you know kind of speaker set up with your PC as well and then have a very nice uh, kind of experience on both. Now in terms of testing I actually did blind ABX testing here where I got my partner to switch which uh, audio device I was connected to uh, without me knowing which one I was connected to between the AE5 the G5 and I actually threw in a, a bit of a control which was the integrated sound card on the Aorus B360 Gaming 3 Wi-Fi, which is a kind of mid-range board. It's not the best audio that you can get on a motherboard, so just bear that one in mind. And I was also using the front panel header for that one as opposed to the rear panel, so just bear that one in mind as well as it's kind of the, the worst case for the built-in audio. Now, I could tell a, a fairly decent difference between the integrated audio and these these two uh, kind of sound devices, the, the upgraded ones, if you like. Um, for me the biggest difference was actually how flat the built-in audio felt and how sort of one-dimensional it felt whereas with these the sort of upgraded devices if you like um, they felt a lot more separated so I, I could really pick the to pick to listen to the vocals or the lead guitar or the, the drums or the bass or whatever else rather than just listen to the entire audio track as if it is kind of one mixed piece rather than kind of individual elements in a song. What I couldn't tell was between the two I actually did specific blind AB testing with these two themselves where I got my partner to switch which audio device and I physically couldn't tell which one was which especially because a change in volume actually makes a big difference to perceived quality so that's uh, one that I'll talk about in a second. Now, of course this was listening to music this wasn't listening to you know films 
Giannis also wasn't playing games either and for either of those two well you will be able to likely notice a few more details and things like that in films and it's probably worth it for for that uh, for gaming specifically most games aren't uh, don't use high-res audio only things like say Rainbow Six Siege and a few other uh, games have that option and even then you're likely not going to notice a massive difference in the, the quality between the two and especially not a noticeable difference while you're in the middle of a firefight for example and it won't give you a competitive advantage at least likely anyway now both of these devices are listed as pro gaming so they do have the scout radar option which is kind of interesting and they do also have uh, both have software to go with them which allows for a lot of equalizer settings and obviously with the a5 having the rgb led strips and a lot of uh, light outputs um you know you can customize that in its settings as well but um overall still uh, interesting to have software available now what i mentioned about the the volume and the perceived audio quality is with these high-end devices they're able to re reproduce audio at much higher volumes much more clearly which actually means that generally speaking uh, higher volumes tend to sound more full and more rich whereas with standard audio devices like the built-in one on the motherboard uh, generally speaking the higher the volume get the more tinny the more compressed and the more just generally naff it all kind of sounds which is why with this high-end audio I just kept turning it up to, to get a bit more of a more full and rich experience um, which kind of says a lot so would I recommend one of these the USB over the internal sound card over the other well it kind of depends on what you're after and what you want to do if you want to have a 5.1 uh, audio setup at your desk with you know a great headphone amp built in as well then the internal uh, a5 is the way to go it is an awesome card it looks absolutely beautiful I cannot recommend at least its looks anymore um, and overall the audio quality is excellent uh, and obviously it depends on what headphones and speakers you have and stuff like that but I, I was incredibly impressed if however you just want to drive a good set of headphones and you do you want some portability for example then the g5 is where you should head it is a really nice bit of kit it's pretty easy to use I'd mention that the dial is a little bit loose but otherwise that the profile are interesting and you can set them up in the software and actually the, some of the options like the crystallized function do actually provide a decent bit better sound quality with them turned on so you might want to give that a shot. Now both of these are relatively expensive they're over £100 each so bear that in mind it's not going to be someone uh, something that the average person really desperately needs but if you do have a good set of headphones or speakers already then this is something that I would recommend to get the most out of them and just a generally nice experience. So you've heard my thoughts I would love to hear yours in the comments down below are you someone who's interested in picking up a sound card or is your integrated one just fine for you do you not have a pair of headphones that would kind of work with this or uh, do you already have them and you already have some like this let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to check out the g5 or the a5 i'll leave links in the description down below where you can check that out if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a monday wednesday and friday basis then take a look at the link in the description down below there's links to amazon and overclock uk in terms of affiliate links there's also a patreon or you can check out the merch where you can pick up nice nice t-shirts and hoodies like this one and of course if you're new to the channel then hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more videos as i said every monday wednesday and friday there's plenty of other videos over here for you to check out and otherwise thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it if you've got any questions leave them in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video